so today in this video we are going to make this forest scene inside unreal engine 5 so i'm going to teach you all the techniques and uh, the workflows that i used to make this scene before we actually start with this video i would like to give a huge shout out to all the people who support the channel on patreon so thank you so much for your support on patreon it really helps a lot okay so we're going to start from scratch here i'm going to create a empty project and we are going to use ray tracing so uh, turn on ray tracing and then just create a project after creating the project we are going to set up our lighting so just go to the environment light mixer and here you can add your light so i want to add everything except the volumetric clouds select the skylight make sure that it's set to movable and turn on real time capture after that let's add a post process volume in the level there we go in the post process settings search for infinite extends make sure that you turn that on next search for exposure and make sure that you turn that on as well and set your exposure to a constant number this way your exposure is going to be locked and the brightness will not change You can also rotate the sun to change the lighting in your scene. So this looks pretty good. Once your lighting is done, you can group all the lighting elements into a folder. Okay, now it's time for the terrain generation. And uh, you can you do this like in multiple ways. You can do this inside Unreal Engine if you want. But I'm going to use a third party program called Gaia. So this application is amazing. I mean, it has a node based workflow and it allows you to generate procedural landscapes. It also has a free version. So you can like download the free version from the website. So we are going to use Gaia in this video. You can use world creator, world machine if you want. So I'm going to create a basic landscape here. So I'm going to add a Perlin noise right here. So you can just right click and search for the node that you want. This will give you some Perlin noise. You can play with the settings right here. So I'm going to increase the scale. You can configure these settings as per your liking. Next, I'm going to add a rugged node. So this will add some more fine detail to our landscape. After that, I'm going to add an erosion node. And as you can see, just out of the box, erosion gives us a very realistic looking landscape. Lastly, we are going to smooth our landscape. So for smoothing, I'm going to add the thermal smoothing node. So now our landscape is looking good. So let's take care of the texturing of the landscape. For texturing, there are many workflows and um, I'm going to use the masking workflow. So we are going to like generate some mask maps. And according to those mask maps, we are going to like apply different quixel materials to a landscape. So for masking, I'm going to add a slope node. And I'm going to connect that right there. So when you select the slope node, you can just see the texture. I mean, you can't see the landscape mesh. So just select the thermal node and you need to pin this as underlay. And now you will be able to see the mesh as well. So in the slope, you can choose the classic style. And the slope basically um, gives you like a black and white mass map. So this is a very cool way of like isolating uh, different regions of your landscape and then texturing it based on this black and white mask. So our material mask looks good, but we'll also need a displacement map for the landscape generation. So for the displacement map, I am going to add an output node. And this output node will output a displacement texture. So in the build, you can rename this output node to height map. In the output properties, you need to change the format. This is very important because Unreal Engine has some uh, recommended file formats. So you can select the PNG 16 bit. After that, you will also need to mark these nodes for export. So now in the build tab, you'll notice that we have these two nodes and these nodes are going to be exported. So we also need to select the file format of the slope node right here. So just select the PNG as well for the slope. So we are exporting these both maps as 16 bit PNGs and that will work really well. 
Next we have resolution. So here for Unreal Engine, we have some presets in Gaia. So we are going to choose the 4K one. Now, if you're using the free version, there are some limitations here, but again, it doesn't matter as uh, we are going to like add a lot of uh, grass and uh, foliage onto our landscape. So for the resolution, I'm going to select 4033 pixels. And now down here in the terrain definition, you also need to set the scale to the same value. So if your landscape texture is like 4K texture, it's like 4033 by 4033. You will need to set this scale value to 4033. So these values should match. So everything is looking pretty good. So you can start the build process. This will take some time. And after that, you'll get two textures. One will be the height map and one is going to be the mass map. Okay. So back in Unreal, we are going to go in the landscape mode and here we are going to import our landscape from our texture. So we are going to select that texture right there and you need to change the height here. The only thing that you need to change here is the height. Again, I'm not going for like one to one realistic scale. So you can change the height to whatever you like. For me, a height of 800 works fine. So we have created our landscape, but currently we can't see it because of the exponential height fog. So you need to hide the exponential height fog. And there we go. So we have our landscape. Now, um, you need to move this landscape on the Z axis, something like that. And yeah, this looks pretty good. So now you can bring back the fog, the exponential height fog. So as the name suggests, this exponential height fog is a height fog. So like it is based on the height. So you can move it on the Z axis to increase the density. Okay. So our landscape looks pretty good. Now let's add some quicksill assets. So add quicksill content. So here we'll need a rock texture. So download it at whatever quality you like. Download a grass texture as well. And we also going to need some grass. So download this grass asset. So after importing the assets, let's create a landscape material. So I'm going to create a material here and double click to open it. So now we are going to import our mask map. After importing the slope texture, you'll notice that uh, this is looking like reddish in Unreal Engine. This is completely normal because this is a grayscale map. So I'm going to drag this texture right here and we are going to use the red channel. And as you can see, we have a black and white texture there. So basically now the idea is, uh, I want to like add grass in the white parts and I want to add rock in the black parts. So this is what we are going to achieve. And for that, we are going to add a lerp node. So this slope node basically takes in like a mask map, a black and white texture, and you can add different things in the white parts and the black parts. So we have two inputs here, the A and the B one. And we are going to add our grass and rock textures. So let's add our grass textures. So these are quicksill textures. So I'm going to add them like that. And first we are going to just focus on the color maps first. Similarly, add the rock textures as well. So just add them. And again, we are going to focus on the color map first. Now we just need to simply add these textures in the B and the A slot. And this might be inverted for you. I mean, so just play around. So for example, if you're getting the rock texture in white parts, you will need to like invert this loop. So for me, the grass is in the B and the rock is in the A. Now here we need to do one more thing. We need to add the UV because currently like uh, this texture is not like UV map properly. So let's add a landscape uh, coordinate landscape layer coordinate. So this is a special texture coordinate node for landscapes. And uh, the way this works is like you need to add the resolution of your landscape. So we used a terrain scale of 4033 units and we also exported these maps at a resolution of 4033, right? In the scale right here, mapping scale, just add 4033. If you go back in the scene, you'll notice that we have all the textures in the appropriate parts. So our loop is working really well. The texture repetition is a lot. So for the texture repetition, you can add a texture coordinate. So uh, I'm going to add a multiply. 
connect it in the UVs of the grass texture. Add a scalar parameter. We are going to call this something like grass tiling. And this value is going to control the texture repetition of the grass. Now we can duplicate this and you can do the same thing. Just add one more scalar parameter and this is going to be the rock scale. So if you go back in the scene, you'll notice that now our landscape looks pretty good. We have less repetition in the textures and this looks good. But now we have another problem and our landscape is like quite shiny. So we don't want that. That is going to be controlled by the specularity. And in a similar way, you can give different uh, glossiness values, specular values to different parts of your landscape. So let's say your rocks can be like uh, more specular than the grass. So I'm going to add two scalar parameters here, call it rock specularity and grass specularity. So in like PBR workflows, generally we don't touch specularity. I mean, the specularity value is set to 0.5, but uh, in this case, like I'm going to like lower down the specularity and the specularity is going to also be like controlled sort of, uh, using the roughness map. So we are going to do that later on. Now let's take a look at adding some more detail in the landscape. So for that, we are going to use normal maps. Again, the workflow is very similar. Just connect a loop. And we have two normal maps here, the grass normal map and the rock normal map. And one more thing, all these textures should use the same UV values. So uh, make sure that you add those properly as well. So lastly, now we are going to add the roughness map and connect the alpha right there. Now in Quixel a uh, bridge, like the way these textures work is we have like a masked map. So this map right here, this is called a ORD map. So O stands for ambient occlusion and R stands for roughness and D stands for displacement. And those things correspond to like different color channels. So like in our case, we need the roughness. So that corresponds to the green channel. So just add the green channel into the loop. Again, connect the UVs properly. And our material looks pretty good. So our material is about done. So this was like a pretty simple way of creating a landscape material. So we have some roughness and we have some normal detail. Our landscape is looking pretty good. Now I'm going to add some trees and for the trees, I'm going to use mega scan trees. So this is the black alder pack and you can get it for free in the unreal engine marketplace. And since I'm using unreal engine 5.1, you can turn on nanite. Okay. Now I'm going to start adding some trees and changing my light. And let's try this out. So if you go to nanite visualization, you'll notice that this tree is using nanite. Actually, I've noticed that if you turn on nanite on these trees, you get a very uh, big performance boost. I mean, the performance boost is like insane. So just add some trees in the foreground and the background. Now you can place trees manually, but I will choose to add these trees, the rest of the trees using the foliage panel. So you can go to the foliage panel, select the trees and add it into the foliage. Now to view the foliage settings, you need to scroll down and just drag this window up. Actually, this is a glitch in 5.1. So now you can like change these values. You can change the density. You can give it a scale, like a random scale value. Make sure that you set the mobility to movable. All the foliage that has wind applied to it or that is like moving. You need to set those foliage elements to movable. If you don't set that to movable, you're going to get some jitter while they are moving. And that is because of lumen. So make sure that you set those to movable. If you have static foliage elements like rocks or stuff like that is completely fine. You can change those to static. Okay. So in this process, I'm just going to go back and forth, change the density and just paint these assets on my landscape. Make sure that you're only painting trees where there's grass. That's one thing to keep in mind. So I've painted some trees. After that, we are going to add some grass assets. So this is the grass that we imported from Quixel Bridge. And since we are using UE 5.1, we are going to turn on Nanite on the grass assets as well. Mm -hmm. 
Now select your grass and add it into the foliage. Now we are going to paint grass so make sure that you are selecting the grass assets and like disabling the trees. If you don't like the grass density you can always go in the foliage settings and change the density. So I'm just going to paint all of these grass assets in the bounds of my view because I don't want to waste resources. And if you take a look at the nanite scene, you can see that all of these assets are using nanite. One more thing, you can also use path tracing to render this. You will see this path tracing setting if you are using ray tracing. So while we created the project, we turned on ray tracing. So that enables the path tracer as well. Now, if you go back in the post process volume and search for like path tracing, you will see all these path tracing settings. So you can basically include the sky atmosphere as well in the path tracing. You can turn off the denoiser. So if you include the sky atmosphere in the path tracing, you can see that we have a very realistic looking scene. In my opinion, the real time view looks better, I think. So yeah, that's it. So if you learned something in this video, make sure that you like the video. Also uh, check out my Patreon page. I upload a lot of different like Unreal projects there. So like if you want to get all of that stuff, make sure that you check out my Patreon page. Lastly, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. That's it. Thank you for all the support and I'm going to see you in the next video.